Welcome students. Today I am going to talk about respiration, the respiratory media and the taxonomic comparison of respiratory system among vertebrates. Now to start with, by hearing the word respiration, what comes to our mind is the simple breathing process that is inhaling and exhaling. But this part is only the one part of respiration. There are two other parts also associated with it. So, respiration is divided into three parts. One is the external respiration in which we include the simple breathing process. The second is internal respiration wherein we include the exchange of gases from the respiratory surface, in our case that is the lungs with the tissues. That is the internal respiration and the third and the last part of respiration is the cellular respiration where actual, where actual oxygen is utilized for the oxidation of foodstuffs and liberation of ATP. And again, this the uh, byproducts of respiration in cellular respiration are exchanged with the environment in the third part of it. So, to sum up, a respiration is a collective process of exchanging uh, oxygen from that environment into the cells where the oxygen is used for oxidation of foodstuffs and liberation of ATP. The byproduct of it is carbon dioxide which is utilized and which is taken to the respiratory surface and exchanged with the environment. Now the respiration is very important phenomenon and is the one of the important components of the human or the vertebrate life. The different rates of respiration depend on the different factors. Number one factor is that of the body size. Increasing the body size will uh, mean that the rate of respiration is going to decrease as is seen in case of tortoise and other big elephants and big uh, vertebrates the rate of respiration is comparatively very less and the rate of respiration is very fast in the animals which have smaller size like that of the rat and shrimp. The other factor is the metabolic rate. Again this uh, metabo factor that is metabolic rate is related with the size of an animal higher the size lesser is the metabolic rate and smaller the size accordingly metabolic rate is very high. The other factor on which the rate of respiration depends is that of the efficient respiratory system. Efficient respiratory system is required to optimize the exchange of gases with the environment. The third factor on which respiration depends and its rate depends is that of the cell surface area that is the respiratory surface area it should be very high and it means the optimum exchange of gases. Higher the surface area of the respiratory surface means higher rate of respiration. Last factor on which the rate of respiration depends is the density and the viscosity of medium, which means denser and viscous the medium in which exchange of gases is taking place, more of the energy will be required for the exchange of gases in such environment. What is the effect of cell size or, or the body size on the rate of respiration? We will be talking about that in the due course. It has been seen that increasing the cell size means uh, we will be increasing the surface area by the square of the cell radius. And increasing the cell area or cell size also means increase in the volume of the cell and that is, at the, uh, that is uh, by the cube of the cell radius which means higher the cell surface area is definitely an important part as I talked about earlier only the increasing surface area will increase the optimum exchange of gases but increasing the volume will mean the more oxygen required for the cellular uh, life thus increasing the cell size means more oxygen and therefore rate of respiration will accordingly decrease. In multicellular animals this is the reason why increasing the cell size or increasing the body size means increasing the rate of respiration. One of the important term used in the respiratory system is, is that of the boundary layer. Boundary layer is the layer of where the actual exchange of gases takes place with that of the environment. More thin the boundary layer, higher is the rate of respiration, which means that this layer that is the boundary layer should be the thinnest possible surface where exchange of gases will be optimum. We have to create the uh, gradient of oxygen and carbon dioxide on the two sides of this layer, which means that we will be accordingly 
increasing the rate of respiration. What are the strategies that we will be using for the exchange of gases? Number one is increasing the surface area of the respiratory organ which in our case is lungs and in aquatic animals is that of the gills. But we have to keep in mind that we have to accordingly increase the surface area by keep, keeping in view the volume of the organ involved. The second important strategy used is to decrease the thinness of the surface of the respiration which can be done by two mechanisms. One is circulation of the internal fluids that means in our case say for example the blood is there we have to in, uh, we have to circulate the blood in the respiratory sur uh, surface so that more and more exchange of gases will take place. The second thing we can do is external bulk transport which means in, uh, in aquatic animals it is say for example the water the respiratory surface should be given a bulk transport of water which is the medium where oxygen is present. In the terrestrial animals the external bulk transport of oxygen should be uh, of air should be given where the oxygen is present. Another strategies that we can we can use to increase the rate of respiration is number one we should use the epithelium simple squamous epithelia which is the thinnest possible epithelium present in the body and therefore which will optimize the exchange of gases with the environment. Second is the circulate water or air throughout the body as is the case with the lower animals like poriferans and sponges where there is no circulatory system in the body but they exchange the water uh, in the respiratory surface which means the thinning of the surface uh, respiratory surface. What is the case with the lower chordates is that they do not have internal circulatory system but they do have got the mechanism of using the surface that is of epithelium thinnest possible epithelium and they use the water only to circulate uh, the air within the body. Let us compare the water and the air. It has been seen that air contains 30 times more oxygen as in case of the ideal water. Oxygen level decreases with increasing temperature and salinity. It has been found that in aquatic medium the temperature decreases the level of oxygen. Again the other factor that is salinity, the pressure, the viscosity of the water body are also going to add to the problems of decreased oxygen level in the body. Again air is very important media, it is lighter and is very fluid while as water is viscous and dense which means that more of the energy will be required for the exchange of gases with the environment. However, it has been seen that water is one of the byproducts of respiration along particularly the cellular respiration along with the carbon dioxide. The oxygen level in the fresh water is around 10.3 milliliters per liter at 0 degree centigrade. At 20 degree centigrade in the fresh water the same level goes down to 6.6 .6 milliliters per liter while as in the saline water at the same temperature that is 20 degree centigrade it has been found the oxygen concentration goes up to 5.3 milliliters per liter which means that in the fresh water at the 0 degree centigrade the oxygen level is high and it decreases with the temperature and salinity. Now what are the mechanisms developed by the fish to do away with the decreased level of oxygen? There are oxygen sensors present over the surface of the body as well as in the internal circulatory system of the fish. Thus when there is decreased oxygen level the fish try to increase number one the ventilation rate or it will try to go to the surface layer where the oxygen concentration will be comparatively higher than the lower levels of the water or it will move to the cooler areas as has been just seen that in the, oxy the oxygen level is higher at the nearing 0 degree centigrade therefore it can move to the cooler areas in search of more oxygen. The last factor that the fish can do is that it can decrease the metabolic rate become 
sedentary or try to uh, be uh, at a comparatively lesser metabolic uh, rate so that it could uh, uh, cope up with the lesser oxygen demand. Now, let us talk about the respiratory organs involved in respiration, particularly among vertebrates. I will be talking about the gills and the terrestrial lungs. Besides these two organs, there are certain accessory or, uh, organs also present. Gills are particularly found in the aquatic organisms and are also referred to as branchiae. The organisms that have gills are fishes and amphibians, but they have not been seen in case of amniotes that is reptiles, birds and mammals. They may also serve besides the exchange of gases, these gills have also been found to help in exchange of water and salts with the environment. Gills are of two types, one is the internal gill and the other type is the external gill. Internal gills are the true gills and the external gills are the false gills. Internal gills are the characteristic of fishes and are present in the gill slits, particularly in the pharyngeal region of the body and it had, they have been found to be attached with, with the visceral arches in the rostral or the proximal that is the front end of the fish. Gills also have slit like apertures on the outside which we call as gill slits. By means of these gill slits, the gills communicate with the water outside and they also help in aiding the oxygen uh, transport. Now, there are number of variations as far as the number of gill slits are concerned. The highest number of gill slits among caudates has been found in case of amphioxus and that is 140. The number of gill slits is from 4 to 14 in case of cyclostomata. The same number has been found to be somewhere around 5 pairs in case of elasmo branches that is cartilage fishes. The number is 6 in case of hexanchus. The number is 7 in case of heptanchus. The number is 4 in case of chimera and teleost fishes. The number is 5 in case of bony fishes. Gills have also been found in case of embryonic structures of other vertebrates, particularly in case of human embryo. The gill like structures have been found in the 4 week embryo, which means that we must have arisen from fish like ancestor as has been talked about by the recapitulation theory that is phylogeny repeats ontogeny. Let us talk about the structure of true gill that is the internal gill. It has been found that gills arise from the gill arches which are present in the pharyngeal pouches or the gill uh, pouches where gills are actually attached with the gill arcs. They are arc like structures on which the gills are arise. Now gills, each gill is made up of two gill filaments which we also called as gill lamellae. In between the two gill lamellae are present interbranchial septum. This gill interbranchial septum have got decreasing or increasing length depending upon the type of fish we are talking about. Each gill filament is also referred to as primary gill lamella and this primary gill lamella is divided into secondary gill lamellae which are the actual sites of exchange of gases and also have got the rich blood supply. Each gill has got primary gill lamella and secondary gill lamella where the in the secondary gill lamella there is rich capillary network where the exchange of gases takes place. Each gill is also uh, highly vascular. The efferent arteriole brings the blood to the gills while as the efferent arteriole leaves the gills with the oxygenated blood but before leaving they form a rich capillary bed in the secondary gill lamella where the exchange of gases takes place. Now let us give a comparative uh, structure of the gill among the different fishes. Number one structure that is associated with this uh, respiratory system of fishes is that of operculum. Operculum is present only in case of bony fishes and is absent in case of cartilage fishes that is elasmo branches. This is a bony flap which arises from the hyoid arch of the body of a fish and also 
creates a crescentric arc like structure which is the common aperture or common gill slit of the bony fishes. This operculum I told you in the beginning only is not found in case of elasmo branch fishes that is cartilage fishes. The second structure which has a comparative importance is that of interbranchial septum. Interbranchial septum is a structure which is highly developed in case of cartilage fishes that is is fully developed there while as it is reduced in the chimera which is also called as rabbit fish or rat fish and is the connecting link between cartilage and bony fishes and this interbranchial septum is completely absent in case of bony fishes. The third structure which has a comparative importance again is the that of spiracle. This spiracle is present only in case of elasmo branch fishes that is cartilage fishes and is not found in case of bony fishes. It bears a reduced pseudobranch and has got a smaller opening on the exterior which also helps in getting the water from the environment along with that of the mouth. Now the second structures, the second type of gills are that of the external gills. These gills are not the true gills and are also referred to as the false gills. These gills arise from the external gill, external epithelium of the skin and are not attached with the pharyngeal pouches at all. They are ectodermal in origin and are temporary structures particularly found in the larvae only. Larvae of lamprey that is the cyclostome that is particularly the petromycin, few bony fishes like that of polypterus, lung fishes like lepidocerin and all amphibians have been found to have the external gills. Larvae are the stages of the life where the external gills have been found. But in case of peribranchiate that is peribranchiate urodeals where the gills have been particularly the external gills have also been found in case of adults. In peribranchiate urodeals the external gills have been found to be present in the adults as well along with the lungs. In emphuma the gills are absorbed but the gill slates remain even in the adults. External gills have been found at the stage of the organism that is larval stage where the metabolic rate is comparatively very low that is they cannot cope up with the increasing metabolic rates that is why these external gills are to be replaced by the true gills that is the internal gills in case of fishes. The internal gills have minimal direct exposure with the water and their structure varies according to the different fish that is present. Now let us talk about the gills of chondrichthys. These chondrichthal gills are also referred to as the septal gills because they have got two primary lamellae in between the two is present the interbranchial septum and this interbranchial septum is attached with the gill racker which is in the pharyngeal gill slit. Now each primary gill filament has got the supply of blood from the efferent arteriole which branches into efferent arterioles and then into capillary bed in the secondary gill lamella and then it will move out from the secondary gill lamella in the form of efferent arteriole with the, with the oxygenated blood. This counter current mechanism helps in the maximum exchange of gases in case of chondrichthys fishes. Now let us talk about the gill ventilation in case of chondrichthys. Mouth and spiracle opens, the pharynx lowers and creates a sort of a suction pressure. Because of this suction pressure water is pulled up from the environment from the medium into the mouth then mouth closes and spiracle opening is also closed and the water is thrown on the gills with a force. This water is rich in oxygen 
and there is exchange of oxygen with the blood and then the gill slits are open and the water is thrown out via these gill slits. This is about the structure of the gill in case of chondrichthys and also I talked about the respiratory media and the problems of breathing in water. So, with this we come to the end of the series 1 of this lecture series. In the next lecture series I will be talking about the structure of gill in case of teleost fishes that is bony fishes and also I will be talking about the structure of lungs and its comparison among the terrestrial organisms. Thank you very much. Thank you.